All right, let's take a look at our third example where this time now I have MATLAB open uh, just in case we need to perform any calculations. Uh, so use the steam tables to do the following. So we have a drum that's 3.5 meters cubed in volume contains steam at one bar and 210 degrees C. Determine the mass of steam in the drum. All right, so in A, we're told that the total volume, V total, is 3.5 meters cubed. We're at a pressure of one bar. And our temperature is 210 degrees C. Okay, and what we want to find, or what we're asked to find, is the mass. Okay. And the key is going to be is I need to know the specific volume of my system. Okay, why? Because I know that the total volume is equal to the mass times my specific volume. So if I could find the specific volume, and since you know, and I know the total volume, then I could find mass. Can I find the specific volume? Yes. All right. Yes, I can. Why? Because I know that for a single component, single phase system, um, I have two degrees of freedom. So if I specify pressure and temperature, the state of my system is fixed. Without even looking at the steam tables, right? I know that at one bar, my saturation temperature, right? At one bar, water boils at 100 degrees C. And so since my temperature is 210 degrees C, I'm going to have a superheated vapor. All right, so I know I'm going to have a superheated vapor, so that's good. I only have one phase to deal with in terms of finding the specific volume. Uh, I don't need to worry about you know saturated liquid and vapor uh, and figuring out uh, exactly what I have. Um, so I ha I'll have a superheated vapor, so I'll go to the superheated steam tables. I'll find V. And once I have V, then I can solve for mass. All right, so we still have the superheated steam tables open from the last problem. Where here I'm looking at one bar. Okay, so here's one bar here, and I need my temperature. My temperature is 210 degrees C. Arg. All right, so 210 degrees C isn't exactly on here. Okay, so we're going to have to interpolate. Um, and so let me tabulate the data so you can see what we would interpolate with respect to. Okay, so key is going to be, okay, let me have a column of temperature in degree C. Now, in the last problem, we worked out our formula for interpolation. Um, here, maybe let me try to use MATLAB. Let me show or demonstrate the use of interp1. Okay, so volume uh, has units of meters cubed per kilogram. So at one bar and 200 degrees C, we're 2.1725. Two point one seven two five. Okay, that's at two hundred degrees C. Okay, we're going to need to find the value at two hundred degrees C. Okay, that's going to be our unknown value. And let's just plug in the value two fifty. Two fifty is two point four zero six two. Okay, and that's at two hundred fifty. Okay, I guess I don't need degree C on here. Okay, so let's interpolate to find the value at 210 degrees C. So in the last problem, we actually um, worked out our formula for linear interpolation. Uh, and then I said you can plug it in. Since I have MATLAB open, let's go ahead and compute it. Okay, and so let me first go ahead and save the script so that I can share it with you. Okay, so in part A, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a matrix of my volumes. So maybe let me call it VM. Okay, and so I'm going to have 2.1775. 2 okay, so it's just going to have two elements in 2.4062. Okay, the corresponding temperatures are 200 and 250. Okay, so I'll think of volume as my y variable and uh, t as my x variable. So let's, so my volume then at 210 degrees C, 
So I'll use interp. So I'll use interp1. So the first argument is going to be my x variable. So my um, independent variable, which in this case is my temperature, followed by my dependent variable, which in this case is volume. And then the value of my independent variable where I'd like to estimate or use linear interpolation to compute, um, in this case, the value of V, so 210. Okay, so if I run this, okay, I get 2.2232. So my volume is 2.2232. That's meters cubed per kilogram. So if I want to solve for mass, which would be in units of kilogram, mass will be V total divided by V. Okay, So that's 3.5 meters cubed divided by 2.2232 meters cubed per kilogram. So mass is equal to that. So let me create a variable. We'll call it um, v total, that was 3.5 uh, meters cubed. So m is going to be equal to uh, v total divided by v at 210. Okay, and that'll be in kilograms. So 1.5743. That's 1.5743 kilograms. Okay, so determine the mass of the steam in the drum. So 1.5743 kilograms. All right, now B. Okay. So wet steam, so now we have wet steam with quality 15% vapor is to be stored under pressure at 20 bar in a thermally insulated vessel. What is the temperature? Okay, so what's key in B? Oops. Oh, to my cursor, what's key in B, okay, is we're told that we have a quality of 0 0.15, okay. So what this tells me then is I have a liquid in equilibrium with the vapor, right? I have a system of two-phase coexistence, a liquid in equilibrium with the vapor. So this means I have a two-phase system, okay. And it's going to be stored. It's to be stored um, with a, at a pressure of 20 bar. Okay. So pressure is 20 bar. All right. So now if I have a single component two-phase system, I have a single degree of freedom. So since we're told we're two-phase coexistence, right, we're you know, told the quality. So obviously we have two-phase coexistence. And my pressure specified it's 20 bar, then I must be at vapor-liquid coexistence. And so it just asks for the temperature, right? Yeah, what's the temperature? So to find the temperature, okay, I'm going to go to my superheated steam tables because that's tabulated in increments of pressure. And what I want to find is the corresponding temperature at vapor liquid coexistence. So for pressure of 20 bar, okay, I'll scroll down. Remember in parentheses, that's going to give you my saturation temperature in degree C. So my temperature is 212 point three eight degree C. And if they had asked for it, all right, we can calculate the specific volume or read off the specific volume of the liquid and vapor. And since we know the quality, we could even go ahead and calculate the specific volume of, of our system. Okay, But it's not asked for, so we'll just write down the temperature. Okay, So key is, we're given a quality, so that means we have a system at two-phase coexistence. All right, so now we're looking at, so if the total mass to be stored is 525 kilograms, what is the required volume of the vessel? All right, so we're going to... I'm assuming that this is referring to um, part B. So from part B, um, we need to store 525 kilograms. So the question is, what is the total volume of the vessel required? All right, so I guess I will need the specific volumes. So key here in, for C is we're dealing with the same system in B, 
only now we're told we have a mass of 525 kilograms. Okay, and so the question is, how big does my tank need to be? So the key is, you know, just as was it problem A, all right, is we need to find the specific volume. Because the key is, is that my total volume is going to be equal to my mass, which I now know, times my specific volume. So I need my specific volume. Can I get my specific volume of my system? Yes. All right. How? Well, we're told the quality. Okay, so this is the fraction that's vapor. And we're two-phase coexistence, so we can look up the molar or specific volume of both the liquid and vapor. So following the last problem, all right, my volume, all right, is going to be the fraction, let me write, the fraction liquid, all right, times the specific volume of the liquid plus the fraction that's vapor times the specific volume of the vapor, where the fraction liquid is just one minus the fraction vapor. Great. So let me add a new page just so we have room. So looking up, okay, oh, so this is 1 minus, yeah, that's V. So we know that XV again was 0 0.15, VL sat, was 0 0.00118. meters cubed per kilogram. And we're at 20 bars, right? Yeah. The specific volume of the vapor is 0 0.0996. Okay, and so with that, you could calculate V and then once you have V, you can go ahead and calculate the volume, the total volume. And since here we have um, units of meters cubed per kilogram and the mass is kilogram, our total volume will have units of meters cubed. Okay, so if we want to compute it, so let me just list here um, part C. So for part C, So let's have XV is equal to 0 0.15. The liquid, just read it from here again, 0 0.00118, 0 0.0996. So V is equal to X1 minus XV times V. L plus XV times VV. And then we're told that mass is equal to 525 kilograms. So V total is going to be mass times V. All right, so my total volume would be 8.3701 meters cubed. Okay, so we find that our volume is equal to, so you can see the MATLAB sheet, 8.37 meters cubed. Okay, and this, let me rewrite this, this is V total. All right, so hopefully that helps. I'll include uh, the MATLAB sheet with this. Okay, so I'll make a note, so if you download this, to see the MATLAB file for the calculations. Hope that helps.